Representation theory of finite groups, lecture nine. Simple characters generate. Let us recall the theorem, which we almost proved during the previous lecture. So the actual statement, which we proved in the previous lecture is the following. Let L1, L2, and so on LK be a complete and irredundant list of simple G modules. Then the characters of these modules form an orthonormal system in the vector space of all class functions for G. For any G module V, the multiplicity of the simple module Li in V equals the inner product of the character of V and the character of Li. If we write V as a direct sum of all these simples Li with multiplicities Mi, then the inner product of the character of V with itself is equal to the sum of the squares of all multiplicities. A G module V is simple if and only if the inner product of the character of V with itself is equal to one. And finally, for two G modules V and W, we have that these two modules are isomorphic if and only if their characters coincide. Compared to the original statement of the theorem, we only have one statement left to prove, namely the statement that the characters of the simple modules generate the space of all class functions for G. So in order to prove this, we start with a description of the central elements in the group algebra. For a function alpha from the group G to the complex numbers, consider the element which we denote by U alpha, and this is the linear combination of all elements in G with coefficients given by the function alpha. So this is an element from the group algebra of G. Proposition, the element U alpha belongs to the center of the group algebra if and only if alpha is a class function for G. Proof, for an element H in G, we have that the product of H with UA is equal, so if you take the definition of UA, so this is the sum over all elements G in G, alpha of G times the product HG. So what we do, we rewrite HG as HG times H inverse H. So this is, of course, this does nothing because H inverse H is the identity element in G. So, but now we can move the rightmost H out from the sum using distributivity and have the element H on the right multiplied with the sum over all G and G alpha of g times hgh inverse. And now if we change the summation index, we will get the sum over all g and g, alpha evaluated at h inverse gh times g. And then all the sum multiplied with h. So in particular, it follows that h times u alpha is equal to u alpha times h for all h in g, if and only if the value of alpha at G is equal to the value of alpha at H inverse GH for all elements H in G in the group G. In other words, if and only if the element alpha is a class function on G. So this proves our proposition. So in fact, using this statement and some standard but quite heavy results from the representation theory, we can outline a short proof of the claim which we are trying to prove. So the previous slide shows exactly that the center of the group algebra has dimension that is equal to the dimension of the space of class functions. From Mashke's theorem, which says that each module is semi-simple, we know that the group algebra 
of the group G is a semi-simple algebra. And every semi-simple algebra is a direct sum of simple algebras. Every simple algebra over complex numbers is isomorphic to some matrix algebra over complex numbers. And this algebra has one simple module and also one dimensional center. Therefore, the number of direct summons of the group algebra is equal to the dimension of the space of class functions for G. So each summon contributes dimension one, since the dimension of the center is equal to the dimension of the space of class functions, the number of direct summons equals the dimension of the space of class functions. And since each direct summon has exactly one simple module, these direct summons are in bijection with simple G modules. So therefore, the number of simple G modules equals the dimension of the space of class functions. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove. We know that the characters of simple modules form an orthonormal system in the space of class functions. And if their number is equal to the dimension, then they form an orthonormal basis there. Starting from the next slide, we give an alternative argument, which is more explicit and without using all these classification results from classical representation theory. So our argument will be based on determining the trace of the central element U alpha, which we considered a couple of slides before. Let V be a simple G module and let alpha be a class function on G. Then we know that the corresponding element U alpha is central. So we just proved that. By Schurz lemma, we know that the element U alpha acts on V as some scalar. Let's denote the scalar by lambda. Claim the number lambda, so this is a complex number, so it is equal to the following. The cardinality of G divided by the dimension of the module V and then times with the inner product between the element alpha and the character of the dual module V, dual. We prove this claim by direct computation. We know that U alpha acts on V as a scalar. So the matrix describing the action of U alpha is a diagonal matrix with lambda on the diagonal. So in particular, the element lambda is equal to the trace of U alpha divided by the dimension of the space V, because the trace of the diagonal matrix with lambda on the diagonal is lambda times the dimension of the space. So lambda is equal by one divided by the dimension of V times the trace of U alpha. But the trace is a linear function and U alpha has this expression as a sum over G alpha of G times G, so we can rewrite this as one divided by the dimension of V times the sum over all G in G, the value of alpha of G, this is a complex number, times the trace of the linear operator, which describes the action of the element little g on V. So we multiply this expression by the cardinality of G and divide it by the cardinality of G. And then, in order to make the sum look as uh, the inner product of functions, we need to complex conjugate the trace. But when we complex conjugate the trace, we know that we should take the dual module. So the trace of the action of the element G on module V is the complex conjugate to the trace of the action of G on the dual module. And when we do these manipulations, then we see that 1 divided by the cardinality of G times the sum over G in G alpha of G times the complex conjugate of the trace of G on V dual is exactly the inner product between alpha and the character of V dual. And this proves our claim. So now let us look at the orthogonal complement to the linear subspace generated by simple characters. So as in the formulation of the main theorem, let L1, L2, and so on, Lk, 
be a complete list of simple G modules. Denote by CF prime the linear span of the characters of these simple modules. So by definition, this is a subspace of the space of class functions. And consider the orthogonal complement to this subspace inside the space of all class functions. Claim, if alpha is a class function which is orthogonal to the characters of all simple modules, then the corresponding element u alpha acts as zero on every G module. In order to prove this corollary, we will need the following lemma. For any simple module V, the module V dual is also simple. Proof. Assume that we can decompose V dual as a direct sum of two modules X and Y. By taking the dual again, we obtain that the double dual decomposes as a direct sum of X dual and Y dual. So this is because taking dual is an additive thing. But the double dual of V is canonically isomorphic to V because V is a finite dimensional vector space. And this isomorphism is compatible with the G module structure. Since V was a simple module, it follows that either X dual should be zero or Y dual should be zero. But then of course, either X is zero or Y is zero. And this proves that V dual is a simple G module. So now we can prove our corollary. Recall that the corollary is that for any class function alpha, which is orthogonal to the characters of all simple G modules, the corresponding element U alpha acts as zero on every G module. Proof of corollary. So due to additivity, it is enough to prove this corollary for simple G modules. So we know that U alpha acts on a simple G module V as the scalar, the cardinality of G divided by the dimension of V, and then the inner product between alpha and the character of V dual. But V dual is simple, and alpha is orthogonal to the characters of all simple modules. Therefore, the scalar is zero. So U alpha acts as zero on any simple module, and therefore it also acts as zero on any module. Small remark, instead of using the lemma that duality sends simple modules to simple modules, we could alternatively use the fact that due to Mashka's theorem, the character of any module is a linear combination of characters of simple modules. And therefore, any function which is orthogonal to the characters of simple modules is also automatically orthogonal to the characters of all modules. Okay, now we are in the position to complete the proof of our big theorem. So we want to prove that the characters of simple modules span the whole space of class functions. And in order to prove that, we need to prove that the orthogonal complement to the subspace generated by these characters is zero. So let us take any element alpha from this orthogonal complement. So we have just proved that the corresponding element u alpha acts as zero on any G module. In particular, it acts as zero on the regular G module CG. But in this regular G module, if we apply U alpha to the identity E, we just get U alpha. So U alpha should be the zero element in the group algebra. And this means exactly that alpha is a zero function. So as a corollary from this, the characters of simple G modules form an orthonormal basis in the space of class functions. In particular, the number of isomorphism classes of simple G modules equals the number of conjugacy classes in the group G. Let us now use this big theorem to compute the following example. Let us determine the character table for the symmetric group S4. Note that, so far, 
we do not have a classification of simple S4 modules. So what we are going to do, we are going to do the following. First, we are going to determine all conjugacy classes in this group. Using this information, we can then conclude how many simple modules we should have. Then we can list the simple modules which we know, and we can try to determine all the simple modules which are left, which we don't know. And the worst case scenario, if we cannot determine the simple modules, maybe we'll, we will be able to determine the characters of these simple modules. Okay, so let us start with conjugacy classes. And actually, we will describe conjugacy classes for all symmetric groups at the same time. So each permutation sigma from a symmetric group Sn can be described using its action graph because each permutation is by definition a function from the set 1, 2, and so on, n, to itself. So for example, the permutation which sends 1 to 3, 2 to 6, 3 to 5, 4 to 4, 5 to 2, 6 to 1, 7 to 7, 8 to 9, and 9 to 8, has the following action graph. So the element 1 is sent to 3, 3 is sent to 5, 5 is sent to 2, 2 is sent to 6, and 6 is sent to 1. 4 is sent to itself, 7 is sent to itself, 8 is sent to 9, and 9 is sent to 8. So this is the action graph describing sigma. And of course, since sigma is a permutation, each connected component of this graph is a cycle. So let us now write the lengths of all cycles which appear in this action graph. And let us write this taking into account all multiplicities. So the corresponding vector which we obtain is called the cycle type of sigma. So for example, the element sigma which we just considered has cycle type 5, 2, 1, 1 because we have one cycle of length 5, one cycle of length 2, and two cycles of length 1. And of course, by the definition, if we add up the entries in the cycle type of sigma, the answer will be n. So in our example, 5 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 9, because this particular sigma is a permutation of 9 elements. So now we can formulate the statement describing the conjugacy classes in Sn. Proposition, for two elements sigma and tau in Sn, the following assertions are equivalent. The first assertion, sigma and tau are conjugate in Sn. The second assertion, the action graphs of sigma and tau are isomorphic. And the third assertion, the cycle type of sigma is equal to the cycle type of tau. Proof. Consider two elements sigma and xi in Sn, and the corresponding element sigma and tau, which is equal to xi inverse sigma xi. Then, the action graph of the element tau is obtained from the action graph of the element sigma by renaming the vertices according to the permutation xi. So indeed, tau is xi inverse sigma xi. So we first rename the vertices using xi, then we do the permutation as described by sigma, and then we go back using xi inverse. So therefore, the two graphs are isomorphic, and hence the cycle types of sigma and tau coincide. Conversely, if the cycle type of sigma is equal to the cycle type of tau, then of course the action graphs are isomorphic, and let us say that they are isomorphic by an isomorphism given by a permutation xi. And then this permutation conjugates sigma and tau. Okay, so using this description of conjugacy classes, we can explicitly write down conjugacy classes for the group S4. So the possible cycle types for S4 are 4, 3, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, and 1, 1, 1, 1. So let us list representatives for each conjugacy class. 
So for the conjugacy class 4, we can take the long cycle which sends 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 1. For the cycle type 3, 1, we can take the 3 cycle which sends 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and 3 to 1. For the cycle type 2, 2, we can take the product of two transpositions, 1, 2, and 3, 4. For the cycle type 2, 1, 1, we have the transposition 1, 2. And for the cycle type 1, 1, 1, 1, we have the identity element. So we have five cycle types. In particular, we have five isomorphism classes of simple S4 modules. Okay, let us now think about which modules do we already know. So we know that every group has a trivial module. C triv. So the value of the character of the trivial module at each conjugacy class is equal to 1. Then we know that each symmetric group has the simple module of dimension n minus 1, which is a non trivial summand of the natural module. So we denoted this module by s upper n minus 1, comma 1. So for n is equal to 4, this is a module s upper 3, comma 1. And we also know that the character of this module is given by the number of fixed points of permutation. So this is the character of the natural module, minus 1. 1 is the character of the trivial module. So in our case, the value of the character of this module at the conjugacy class 1, 1, 1, 1 is equal to 3, because we have 4 fixed points. At the conjugacy class 2, 1, 1, so we have two fixed points, the value is 1. So for the cycle type 2, 2, there are no fixed points, the value is minus 1. So 3, 1 has one fixed point, the value is 0, and 4 has zero fixed points, so the value is minus 1. And we also have the one dimensional sine module, C sine, where each permutation acts via its sine. So the value of the character of this module at each conjugacy class is given by the sign of any element in this conjugacy class. So the identity has sign 1, the transposition has sign minus 1, product of two transpositions has sign 1, so the three cycle is a product of two transpositions, it has sign 1, and the four cycle is a product of three transpositions, it has sign minus 1. So these are the three simple modules which we know, but we need five. So there are two modules which we yet have to determine. So how to construct a new module? So what we know that if we take any simple module and tensor with any one dimensional module, the outcome will be a simple module. Uh, there is a catch though, tensoring with a trivial module is not very helpful because it always results in the second factor. So it's tensoring with a trivial module is the identity factor. But we have two one-dimensional modules. We have the trivial module and the sign module. So we can try to tensor with a sign module. So if we take the sign module and tensor with our three-dimensional modules S upper 3, 1, we will get definitely a simple module. The question is whether it's isomorphic to something which we already know or not. And in order to determine this, let's compute its character. So the character is given by taking the characters of the module S3,1 and multiplying it with the character of the sign module. So the, out, the answer will be 3, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 1. So the character of C sine tensor S3,1 is 3, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 1. And this is different from any of the previous characters. So this means that this tensor product is a new simple S4 module. Okay, so what do we have left? So the character table which we know so far looks as follows. So we have four rows because we only know so far four modules. And the trivial module, the character is the constant function one. So the sine module, the character is given by the sine, and we have the character of S3,1, 
and the character of the tensor product of it with a sign module. So we have this table. We know that there are five modules, so we are missing only one module. Let's call it M. So the dimension of this module, so we know that the cardinality of the group is equal to the sum of squares of dimensions of simple modules. So the dimension of the module M is a square root of 24. This is a cardinality of G minus the sum of squares of dimensions of the modules which we know, minus 1 square, minus 1 square, minus 3 square, minus 3 square, which is equal to 2. So there are two typos here. It should be 1 square here and 3 square here. So can we determine the character of M without determining the module M itself? So let's write this character with some unknowns. So we know that the dimension of this module is two, and then let us denote the values of the character at the conjugacy classes by A, B, C, and D. So what do we know? We know that the inner product of the character of M with all other simple characters must be zero. So our main theorem says that the characters of all simples are pairwise orthogonal. But if we want to compute this explicitly, we should remember that the scalar product between the characters is given by summing over all elements in G. So we need to take into account the sizes of the conjugacy classes. So the conjugacy class of the identity has size one. So the conjugacy class where the representative is a transposition has size 6. So this is 4 choose 2. So the product of two commuting transposition, it has size 3. So we choose one transposition and then the other one is the complement. The conjugacy class where the representative is a 3 cycle has length 8. So we need to choose 3 elements and order them up to cyclic permutation. And finally there are 6 long cycles of lengths four. We can order four elements in 24 different ways, but the ordering should be up to a cyclic permutation, so we should divide by four. So these are the cardinalities of the conjugacy classes. Note that they add up to 24. So one plus six plus three plus eight plus six is equal to 24. And then the fact that the character of M is orthogonal to the characters of all other simple modules results in the following system of linear equations. So we can just write that this character is orthogonal to the first character and this, taking into account the sizes of conjugacy classes, which will be simply the coefficients in the product. This gives us two plus six A plus three B plus eight C plus six D is equal to zero. So one, six, three, eight, and six are the sizes of the conjugacy classes. So the second equation means that the character of M is orthogonal to the character of the sine module. Then the third equation is the character of <clears throat> it the orthogonality to the character of S3,1. And the last equation is the orthogonality to the character of the tensor product of the sine module and S3,1. And then we can solve the system of linear equations and find that it has a unique solution. So A, B, C, D is equal to 0, 2, minus 1, and 0. And this gives us our answer that the character table of S4 is as follows. So we have seen already the first four rows of this table, and we have just determined the character of M. So this is the character table of S4. And note that we have determined this table without explicitly constructing the module M. So here is a rough idea how one can construct the module M explicitly. So one, need, one needs to do a couple of tricks. So consider the subset of S4, let's call it H, which consists of the identity element and the three elements of the cycle type 2,2. 2. So S4 contains three elements, which are products of two computing transpositions. 
it is easy to check that this H is a subgroup. And since it's a union of conjugacy classes, it is a normal subgroup. So we can take the corresponding quotient. And then it's easy to check that the quotient of S4 by this subgroup H. So S4 has 24 elements, H has four elements, the quotient has cardinality six. And it is easy to see that this group is not commutative. So the only possibility for this group is that it is isomorphic to S3. So S3 is actually a quotient of S4, and S3 has a two-dimensional simple module S2,1. And this means that the two-dimensional simple S3 module has a natural structure of an S4 module, which is automatically simple. This is our module M. And an alternative general way how to construct simple modules over symmetric groups will be given in the third part of the course. So the simple module M is, in the usual notations for the symmetric groups, is denoted as S2,2. Okay, let us now talk about the second orthogonality relation. For a conjugacy class C in the G module V, let us denote the value of chi V at C as the value of chi V at any element is C. So this is well defined because characters of modules are constant on conjugacy classes. CRM, the second orthogonality relation, let C and C' prime be two conjugacy classes in the group G. Then we have the following. The sum over all simple G modules V, and then we take the product of the value of chi V at C and the value of chi V at C'. prime. So this sum is equal to zero if C and C' prime are different, and it is equal to the cardinality of G divided by the cardinality of C, if C and C' prime coincide. Proof. The fact that simple characters are orthonormal means exactly the following, that if we take the character table of the group and weight all elements by the square root of the cardinality of their conjugacy class, then the rows of this weighted character table are orthonormal. But we know that if the rows of a matrix are orthonormal, then the columns of the matrix are also orthonormal. And the claim of the theorem is exactly the claim that the columns of this weighted character matrix are orthonormal. Here is an illustration. We have just determined the character table of S4. So here is the weighted character table of S4, where we weighted every element by the square root of the cardinality of its conjugacy class. So the conjugacy class of the identity is one, so the first column is the same. But this conjugacy class, which contains a transposition, it has cardinality six. So we multiplied all elements by root of six. So here the cardinality is three, so everything is multiplied by root of three. So here the cardinality is 8, everything is multiplied by root of 8, and here the cardinality is 6, everything is multiplied by root of 6. So this is a weighted character table of S4. And so we know that the rows of this table are orthonormal, and it is very easy to check that different columns in particular are orthogonal. So indeed, 1, 1, 3, 3, 2, and root of 6 minus root of 6, root of 6 minus root of 6. So if you forget root of 6, we get 1 minus 1 plus 3 minus 3 plus 0. This is 0. So these two columns are orthogonal. And we can also check the lengths of the column. So the length of the first column is the square root of uh, 1 divided by 24. So this is our coefficient for, for the inner product and then one square plus one square plus three square plus three square plus two square. This gives us one. And similarly, the length of the second column is uh, the square root of six. This is a common multiple everywhere, divided by 24. This is a cardinality of the group. And then one square plus minus one square plus one square plus minus one square plus zero square. This is again one. 
And similarly, the third column has lengths one and so on. Let us do one more example on how one can use the character table. So let us find the multiplicity of the sign S4 module in the following S4 module. So we take the simple module given by the tensor product of the sign with S3,1 and tensor it with our two-dimensional module M. So how to find this multiplicity? Let us write down the characters of all involved modules. So we know the character of the sign module, we know the character of the sign tensor S3,1, and we know the character of M. So the character of the module N is by definition the product of the character of C sine tensor S31 and M. So it's equal to 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 times 0 is 0, minus 1 times 2 is minus 2, 0 times minus 1 is 0, and 1 times 0 is 0. And now to get the multiplicity, we can compute the scalar product of the character of N with the character of the sine module. So it is 1 divided by 24. And then we should take the sum over all elements and the products here. So it's 6 times 1 plus 0 plus minus 2 times 1. But then remember that we should also take into account the cardinality of the conjugacy class, which is 3. And then 1 times 0 is 0, minus 1 times 0 is 0. So it's 1 divided by 24 of 6 plus 3 times minus 2, and this is 0. So the outcome is 0, which means that the multiplicity of the sine module in n is 0. OK, let us finish with some problems and questions. Question 1. Prove with all details that the trace of g at the module v is equal to the complex conjugate of the trace of G at the module V dual. Question two, prove with all details that the double dual of V is isomorphic to V as a G module. Question three, let N be the simple two-dimensional S4 module from the example in the lecture. Show that the tensor product of the sine module with M is isomorphic to M. Question four, Find the multiplicities of all simple S4 modules in the tensor product of this M with itself. And question five, compute the character table for the alternating group A4. So this is the subgroup of all even permutations in S4. Thank you very much and see you next time.